and a way in an ad cell is about implementing and running network functions and services purely in software on commoditized servers. I call this, and I believe it's the first time I use this term, the stabilization of the network and the telco for that matter. Gains can be potentially realized in a number of areas, ranging from savings in capex, for instance, due to equipment consolidation, and most significantly in opex, that includes savings in power, space, and labor to the added flexibility and agility in the network when dealing with demand increases and traffic surges, and also the ability to offer additional services on demand and on the fly. Another area we think presents a tremendous benefit is the opportunity to be able to design and test new network services with increased time to market speed, enhancing and significantly the innovation cycle, since we won't now have to wait to fully depreciate our equipment before introducing new functionality into our network. Other areas of important gains include improved operational efficiency and scalability, resilience and redundancy. But it's my strong belief and hope that we'll be able to come up with other new services and functions, stuff that perhaps before was not possible to think of, and uncover new ways to architect and operate our networks and data centers. I clearly see the data center environment also benefiting from such efforts. So all in all, the opportunities and benefits are unlimited. The NFP vision is summarized as being able to operate in an environment where most, if not all of our boxes, have given way to 100% software-based solutions. And this can mean various things to different operators, in the sense that each of us may choose at first to visualize and replace different special purpose hardware in our networks. This will depend solely on our priorities, or actually our pain points if you like, and it will be incremental in terms of a migration path. But the predominant vision, in my opinion, is that of the virtualized network appliance as that is emerging, a software-based appliance that it is capable of running concurrently a number of different network functions, from security and firewalling to load balancing, just to give you an example. So NLP is different from SDN in the sense that you don't need an SDN environment to implement NLP. And SDN here refers to the clean, absolute separation of the controller and data plane and the explicit use of the concept of a controller. However, the two technologies are highly complementary and we do view SDN as a very supportive and fitting technology. After all, software is the common denominator. One area I believe SDN can play a key role is the management and orchestration of the now virtualized network functions and services. How you efficiently interlink and weave those functions some call it service training, be critical to the success of NAV. We believe the time is great. Another important area is that of automation, and this is where also we anticipate to see most of the savings coming from, in parallel to be able to rapidly deploy resources where and when needed. With respect to open networking, the presence of open APIs and rich libraries is equally important to us as operators, since it can enable the development of third-party applications and the overall creation of a flourishing ecosystem. Back in the fall of 2012, a bunch of operators got together and decided to form an industry specifications group under the European Telecommunications Standards Institute, ETSI, in order to pursue the development of NAV. I've been fortunate enough to be part of this effort since the very first day. The clear objective and mandate of the group is to produce a set of requirements as led by the operators and an overall specification framework that could uh, lead to further standardization efforts. But the latter is not currently a sub goal of this group. Other goals include the exposure of various use cases and the development of proof of concepts. Some of the basic NLP concepts include a reference architecture of the virtualization infrastructure that comprises of domains such as compute hypervisor network and interfaces. The so-called service sending and service construction that I already mentioned will of course be one of the key ingredients in creating a totally dynamic, automated and virtualized environment. The management orchestration will provide the necessary glue for all the pieces to come together in a harmonious way. We're very excited about this global initiative, the wide industry support we have gotten in only a few months, 
There are currently more than 80 members, in fact, from the industry, is a clear attestation which also lends credibility and validity to our efforts. The one thing we certainly want to avoid is hype. Hence, the focus is on carrying on very diligently with our planned work. We strongly believe that NFV can dramatically change the telecom and uh, service providers landscape in the next few years. So, stay tuned. Thank you.